Okay, everybody, I want to talk about creating Android apps using App Inventor. Now, to find it, you can just do a Google search for App Inventor, and I already have it on here. Um, but if you just Google App Inventor, it'll take you to version two. That's the one you want to do. And um, you're going to want to go here, but if you want to learn about it, you want to learn other techniques and, and tricks, go to tutorials if you like. I'm just going to go jump right to App Inventor 2. So the first thing you're going to see when you try to go to App Inventor is that you need to have a Google account. You need to be signed in. If you're one of my students, you'll have an email that's tied into the district. You'll have your username at hsd.k12.or.us. You click sign into the account. You use that email and your password. It is a Google account. The school district has set that up. Many school di districts have done that as well. If not, you're going to need a Gmail account. Okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and allow it so that I have it open. Now, the first thing it shows you is it shows you some projects that you can open or create a new project. And so if you want to, you know, manage your projects, you can manage multiple projects from here. We're going to start a new project. I'm assuming maybe you've never done App Inventor before. If you already have, this is probably not the best tutorial for you. So move along, nothing to see here. Okay, we're going to call this, what do we say, best app ever? Really? Okay. My other class wanted to call theirs Noodle. We'll call this best app ever. Now, normally I'd recommend whatever you name it, have it be based on what your app is going to do. Okay, so let's just talk about the screens that are here. Um, you've got a viewer. This shows you what kind of your screen window should look like. They took off the whistles and bells. You know, they took off the extra stuff, and they're just focusing on the screen. But you can see this is, you know, not quite unlike what you might see on a mobile device. Okay, so that's your screen and the viewer. On the left are all of the items you can add to your screen. And by the way, you can add more screens. You can have one screen go to another screen. There's, there's a lot of great things here. Let's just talk about what's available. Under the palette, the palette is all the different items that you can use to make the look and feel of your app. We call that the user interface. So all the things the user's going to do to interact with the app. And let's just talk about a couple of them. A button, of course, is something you push and it's supposed to do something, right? Checkbox. This is where you want to add multiple checkboxes and you click on as many as apply and you find a way to get that information out. Let's say you need to choose a date for something. Um, you would use the date picker. And a lot of these are really self-obvious, right? Because uh, you get a, when you want an image, well, let's, how about we use image? Some of these may not be as, as obvious like a spinner. Spinner is basically just a drop-down menu. Um, anyway, so you got a lot of different um, user interface items. If you want to access the web, you would use a web viewer. You want to pick time like a like a stopwatch or some kind of a clock app, use time picker over uh, the date picker, of course. Uh, let's take a look at layout. This is for arranging your items. In a moment, I'll show you my preferred method for using layouts. You got media. Um, we're going to do some media items in here. You can take a look at these. If you've got a question about anything, just click on the question mark. So what's a canvas? Well, here's the explanation. And if that's not enough, click the more information button and you'll get even more information about that, including properties, events, methods. Okay. And a lot of the challenge for you is if you have an idea and you're not sure how to do it and there's no tutorial, you're going to have to just do some trial and error, dig around, do a little Google search, whatever. All right, uh, let's just learn by doing. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a very uh, straightforward app. We're going to have a little window that the user can click on, type a message, and then when you click a button, it's going to actually say that message out loud. Okay, It's a very simple app, but it uses some user interface. It uses a, uh, a text-to-speech, a media item, and uh, that's non uh, it's not visible, so it's, it's worthwhile looking at it. The first thing I do is I create a layout to begin with. I use the layout to, uh, to line up my items on the screen. And on any given app, this is just my, my practice, this is what I do. I drag and drop out vertical arrangement. Right away when I drop it, it's on the screen, it's gray with a green border. You probably won't see the green border if you were to test it out. I don't recall if you will or not. I think that's more for our sake. 
If you look on the right, there's a components window. Was it the white one? Okay, so we got components, and in this window, you can just see where everything is connected to each other. You can see that the vertical arrangement is part of the screen. It's, it's on the screen. So this becomes like kind of this little uh, tree here where you got all the different branches on the screen. Okay, now we can upload files for media here. We can also take an item and rename it there. We're not going to rename it. What we're going to do is change its properties. Right now, it's just this box. I want it to fill the entire screen. So I look at properties, and I can see there's height and there's width. So I'm going to click height, and I'm going to fill the parent. The parent is screen one. We can see because it's, it's not indented. So I click OK, and immediately now it's vertically as tall as the screen. I'm going to do the same thing with the width, fill parent. OK. I believe, but I could be wrong, I believe the little green area on the side might be reserved for a scroll bar. So it may mean if you need to scroll the content, it might pop up. I don't know entirely. But one of the things we can do is test it out when we launch it on an actual device. See if it's even there at all. It may be that it's some kind of uh, like a margin that, that I don't know. But for now, just, you know, just fill the parent. That's as wide as you're going to get on here, unless you make it wider than the screen can possibly be. Now. Um, a line horizontal, a line vertical, if you want to put things, when you drop them, if you want them to appear horizontally on the left, choose left. If you want them centered, then click on here and choose center. You want everything to line up on the right-hand side, then make it right. Okay, so it's up to you how you do that. Um, if you want everything to be at the very top, you do top. If you want them centered from top to bottom, you do center, etc. You can kind of get that idea here. We can change the background color. I'm just going to leave it default. Now, first thing we're going to do is have a welcome text. It's going to be the entire width of the screen. Actually, before we even do that, let's adjust this screen. I think screen one is not very user friendly. Wouldn't you agree? So I click on screen one and I look at its properties. I'm looking for a property that says screen one so I can figure out where to change it. And there it is, title. Okay. So we're going to give this a simple title. Okay, against my better judgment, we'll give it the same name as the app. Best. Well, I'll start with the. you got to have the in front of it. It's not just best app ever. It's the best app ever. Exclamation mark. I click. There it is up there. Best app ever. You want to change it? You just go down to the title, and you can change it in there. You want to make uh, the sizing different. You want to play around with it. There's your options under properties. Now, let's take a look at our user interface items. What we're going to do is we're going to have an explanation. We're going to have a box that the user can type some text in. We're going to have a button that when we click it, it's going to say something. So the first thing we want to do is have our welcome text. That is label. Label is where you want to just put some text. It's usually used to label other items. Okay, now I'm going to code this out, and then I'll explain what I did after the fact. Okay, before I do any edits of it, though, let me also recommend um, you come up with good naming conventions. You want to name your components in a system that works. So instead of label one, I want to give it a name. I want, it, I want me to know that it's a label, but I also want to have it be a welcome. So I click it, I choose rename, and I'll... Type out here. This is how we do it in Android <laughs> development. Everything lowercase, and we do underscores in between our words. Label, welcome. I put what it is first, and then sort of its description second. So then let's add our text. All right, I went ahead and added some text in here by editing the text. To keep the text from scrolling off of the screen, make sure you do a fill parrot on the width. If you did automatic and you clicked OK, it would not. It would just go off the screen. We don't want to do that. So make sure you set the width to fill parrot if you're going to have a long bit of text. OK, so there's our text label on here. One of the other things here, we also should be uh, careful about how we do the height. Uh, sometimes if we do fill parent, of course, it's going to be too large. But if we don't, notice it extends below that green line. And let's see what happens if we drag, say, a button here. 
Yeah, see the button just goes right over that on top and we don't want that. So I'm going to I'm going to delete that button and I'll show you what to do. Well, at this point, I think the best thing for you to do is kind of figure out like um, how wide, the, how tall this needs to be. Um, if you were doing other apps like Android Studio, you would be able to set this more precisely. But in this case, let's just go ahead and set the percentage to cover sort of the top maybe 10% of the screen. See how that works under properties. So we're going to try 10%. All right, so now we need to change that. Let's try it like 14%. 15% will give us enough space. I think 15% should do the trick. There we go. So now the text fits within the box. I think we're okay. We're going to add, now I'm going to go to layout and use a horizontal arrangement because we're going to have a label on one side and a text box on the other. So I'm going to drag that out. Notice how it goes just below the other item. That's because we're in a vertical arrangement. We make the width, fill the parent. We keep the height automatic. We may change that into a percentage later. In it, we need two items, a label for the text box and the text box itself. This is the text box. We start with the label. And we grab the text box and we drop it side by side. You'll see how the, the label, excuse me, the label fits on the left, text box on the right. That's because it's a horizontal arrangement. Okay, at this point, I've got a label and a box. And to adjust the sizing here, I'm going to use percentages of width for each of these. So I'm going to make this thing about 20% on the left and the other 80%. We'll see if that's wide enough. So I click on width. I click on percent. We'll try 20. Click OK. Notice it goes to two lines, that's all right. We're gonna click on the text box and we're gonna set its width to the remaining percent, which is 80. Click OK, and that fills in there. We're gonna do a couple more things to the text box. We're gonna line the text on the right-hand side so that it's closest to that window. And by using percentages, the nice thing about percentages is then it, it allows it no matter what the width of the screen, we don't have to worry about actual hard numbers like pixels. Um, and so we can do this. We're going to make this bold and we've got our text. The last thing we want to do um, before is uh, before we're done with this area is to rename these. So I'm going to rename it. We're going to call this label message title. And we'll put, I'm sorry, we'll label, yeah, we'll call it label message. The other one was label welcome. Text box, we're going to rename that to text. I'm not going to put box, I'm just going to assume we know text message. Okay, so now we've, we've labeled these, we've got it set up. Oh, I need to change this to say enter message here. So I click on the, the text for the label. your message. Okay. We're going to change uh, the height on here. We're going to make it multi-line. And I think for height, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone. Don't worry about that later. Uh, later on, we can add that. The last thing I want to do is add a button here. We're going to just put it below. And we're going to rename that button. We'll call it get message. Click OK. I'll just write get message. Or list, uh, yeah, we'll try it, get message. We can change that later if you want. Um, the last thing we need is text to speech. We need a way to have the app actually say something out loud. That is a type of media. So it's under media, it's text to speech. I drag it and I drop it. It appears down below, text to speech. Um, I'm just going to leave it named as it is. At this point, we've got all of our user interface items and we've played around with the ranging. It's not the best setup right now because it only takes up the top third of the screen, but at least it gets us there. In um, the next stage of the tutorial, I'll show you how to code it and then how to get it onto a device.